looking on point. This is what six weeks in a cave does to you. Yeah, and this is what six weeks in a cave <laughs> does to me. So, uh, yeah, 100,000 subs. 100,000 subscribers, not bad. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. It is, uh, it's, it's mad, it's isn't it? Crazy. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Just as ridiculous as last night was. Honestly, I almost died. <laughs> <laughs> no, very, very cool. So, thank you all. And, yeah, what else can you say, really? Yeah, no, it's amazing, amazing stuff. Alright. Oh, Cheers guys. Ten thousand Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker. Again, a huge thanks for the hundred thousand subs <laughs> and all the concern as I stayed up overnight just busting a gut to get all these videos out. Appreciate the love, it is awesome. Glenn's working away on our sales video. Remember, we give away a copy of Children of Mortar each and every week. In fact, we're giving three away. And because it's our 100,000 subscriber sales special, we'll be giving away a few copies of Hypercharge Unbox, thanks to those guys as well, on that video. Now, if you have Twitter, please go and check out at SwitchUpG, where we're giving away two Geotech controllers. It's a global giveaway. Just head over there and the information's on one of the posts. With all that said, I really wanted to look at Bioshock Infinite. It's been nagging at me since I finished, uh, well, I think I finished making my videos at about 11 a.m., slept until 3.30 a.m., and then I woke up like, I need to make this happen. And I've got everything together, and it's such an interesting one. It's probably the most interesting of all the videos I've put out in terms of the amount of different things they've done on the game. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Bioshock series, this time around, it's set up in the heavens rather than under the see but is the port heavenly or is it straight out of hell well let's find out just as with the other titles one and two the third unfortunately doesn't feature 2k's proprietary gyro aiming that they applied for borderlands which just is a head scratcher and makes no sense to me at all but i can only imagine time constraints or some other reason meant that it didn't port across but i i really can't think of any other <clears throat> reason that that could possibly be really maybe they didn't have the time to get that done so that's a shame i hope 2k if you're listening please please come on let's get that in there there's a lot of us that rely on that gyro aiming especially with my old man hands my, i can't be doing the thumbsticks now other options include the ability to invert axis tweak the sensitivities as i don't know what's up with the default sensitivities on these but i have to crank it right up as mist said in the comments i like it to feel like a mouse and keyboard so having that mouse movement you need it really quick other than that you've got your usual array of brightness options little tweaks to the UI and HUD to make it the way that you want it to be. But that most interesting aspect is the performance and visuals. Now, of all the three games, this is the one that just blew the color palette out the water. It took the dull, drab, and still quite beautiful Rapture, and then sent you up into the heavens, and the color palette just explodes. Another thing that it did that the other games didn't do quite so much is introduce things like God Rays, or chromatic aberrations if you want to be like super nerdy about it and the fact that these have made it so well into the switch version is just a testament to the developers lights shining through different surfaces blending around trees and through the sky it just looks on point in terms of the clarity now again possibly due to the nature of the different color palette here it really stands out it's got a punchy look to it and on the switch it just it just pops my eagle eyes have been spotting the areas where they've managed to still keep it looking amazing but also also save a few frames per second. Now most games have a level of detail slider in them when you play on the PC and what this essentially does is it changes the distance with which an item or object within the world, a geometric shape, gets more detail. The further away you move, the less detail, the closer you get, the more detail. But there's a point with which it switches from super low to standard detail, and here it's quite obviously closer to the character. Now, when you're playing the game at 30 frames per second locked out, you don't really notice these shifts too much. It's only because I'm looking for them. Another area that they've done this is with the volumetric smoke. You can see this appear and disappear when you move forwards and backwards at certain points throughout a stage. But again, would you ever notice this? Probably not, because your eye really is drawn to the overall crispness of the image 
which remains really strong. Now, as I mentioned, the frame rate is 30 locked out. There are a couple of smaller stutters here. This is probably the most taxing of the three titles, but generally, again, it's really smooth, with frame pacing that, to my eye, is the best of the three titles released. Input lags, minimal, if they're at all. And while I'm sure they've used some form of V-Sync, vertical synchronization, to reduce tearing, it's still an easy game to control. I just would have loved to have motion controls. I'm gonna get you to do your spotting skills now, so have a look at these few scenes and see if you can spot the level of detail popping in and out. Another interesting aspect of this port is how good those textures are. Now I mentioned in Bioshock 1 and 2 that objects and items up close just look fantastic and it's not an easy thing to do when your system memory is as low as the switches. I mean I know we've got 4 gigs but it's still, as we've seen in many titles, not an easy thing to get right. It seems like the textures almost stream in as you move around the world. Sometimes you'll notice as it loads and I know this again is probably a product of the engine but you'll notice those textures get in better for a few milliseconds and it's not something that you wouldn't notice on other consoles or even the PC for that matter. Load times for the most part are okay, not bad at all. They're falling within the range of Bioshock 1 and 2 and you certainly won't be sitting there thinking when the hell is this thing going to load like I was with my time at Porsche. I think that one's still loaded and don't get me started on Pine, my word. Now in terms of the game then there are a few extra things it comes with. It'll come with all of the DLC and added gameplay modes which you can see here so there's a great deal of content to sink your teeth into. I don't know about you guys, but I am very impressed with 2K's overall job. And I know it's, is it Virtuous who have been working on these ports? Hope I've got that name right because they have smashed it out of the park. But with all of this happening, it does feel a touch like we might see a new game to some of these franchises. There is such a market there. If they released a Bioshock 4, I mean, I know in the past they've said it was a trilogy, but you know, money exists. I would be all over that. Where would you set it? Let me know in the comments. Where would you set Bioshock 4? One of the final areas I want to look at is the sound design, and oh my goodness, they have nailed it here. Hey, I baptize you in the name of our prophet, in the name of our founders, and the name of our Lord. I'd kind of forgotten how good the audio was in this series, and as you ascend into the heavens and the choir literally sings you into land, it's definitely a goose pimples moment. They've hit the ball out of the park in terms of the overall performance that I've seen so far on the Nintendo Switch. Now, let's have a look at my impressions of the game. When I very first played through this one, for whatever reason, I missed Rapture. I missed being under the sea and I felt it was a negative to move it away. And actually, I see now that I was totally wrong. Making the comparison to bands and music, there are so many that have completely and drastically changed their style whilst retaining who they are and initially been met with perhaps a bit of criticism, but then later they looked back on as absolutely legendary. And I think this is the case here. This is now my favorite Bioshock title by quite a way. The deranged cult leader, the strange hymn music and the cultist followers, it just all works brilliantly. I love the plot line as well and the way you interact with the main character. I'm not gonna say who it is because I know I'll get spoiler things, but I think the overall pacing is excellent. The way these guys introduce you to the world is second to none. It's what game is all about and I think it's something, it's a bit of an art form that's been forgotten over the years by some developers. If it doesn't involve some form of loot box or a spinning wheel, then they just don't bother with it anymore. And really, this is the style of game I think we need to get back to. What we don't need to get back to though is charging a little bit too much for the titles. Now, whatever you think of the prices, in my opinion, they could have perhaps gone a little bit lower over the board. And things like making it cost more to buy the Borderlands titles individually, as opposed to buying the group bundle, I get it from a marketing standpoint, but as a consumer, if I've completed the other ones, it's just a bit annoying to be honest. Okay, so that's it for this performance review. Remember, we do have reviews of Borderlands 2 if you want to go check that out. XCOM 2 which the performance wasn't quite up to snuff but it hasn't been on any current generation console at all so it's still more than playable for me and I enjoyed it immensely. And Bioshock 1 and 2 if you want to go check those out all the links will be down in the top comment for you to go and check them out. I just noticed a post on Reddit like the top post on Reddit they're using my thumbnail and they've not even credited us for the video. Cheers guys, nice one. A big thanks to all of you who've just joined the channel as we've hit 100,000, that is incredible. We're releasing videos all the time and just try and keep it pretty chill here and we've got a decent community. If you wanna go and check out our Discord, the link to that will be down in the description and it's a good place to go and find community groups for 
Animal Crossing, now Borderlands, and other games to find friends to play with as we all know the Nintendo Switch Online isn't the greatest in terms of its usability. Can you send a message yet? Man, you can't, you can't send a message. Ouch, it's worth the money, isn't it? Anyway, a big thanks to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. You really shouldn't do that because everything that's going on, but we do appreciate it. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!